Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let's begin our worship today by reading Psalm 90, verses 1 and 2. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Father God, we praise you today, our eternal God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can see.
Father God, we come here today in praise because you are our eternal God. You are the beginning and you are the end. Father God, you are always there. You always know. Father God, you have all things in control. 
Father God, I pray that today that we will have confidence in the unseen, the eternal, as we trust you for everything that we're facing in our lives today. We thank you, God, for this incredible missions conference that you've given to us, this time of, of receiving and learning so much from our missions partners. I pray, God, that we will learn from these challenges today, that we will go forth and be a part of this 2020 vision to reach this world for Christ. Father God, I want to pray, especially for those in India today. I pray, God, that they're facing difficult times during this pandemic. We thank you, God, for the way you've used them and their faithfulness. We thank you, God, for the way you've met their needs. We have confidence that you will continue to do so. Father God, we want to pray for Cindy and Bach and Banu and Samir and the other brothers and sisters that are serving there together. Encourage them, Lord. Let them know that we are here for them today. Father God, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters serving in that incredible ministry in England. We want to pray as they continue to train leaders for, for England and for China and other parts of the world. We thank you, God, for the many that have gone through this ministry and are sharing the hope of Christ globally. We thank you, God, for the faithfulness of Henry. And you continue to use him as he leads this ministry forward in the, as, he, as he has this 2020 vision for the world. Father God, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters serving faithfully in Thailand. We thank you, God, for Kathy's home and the Hope House and the other parts of the ministries that are happening there in Thailand today. We thank you, God, for their faithfulness. We thank you, God, for the young people that have accepted Christ, that have been discipled, and they're now going forth and leading the church in Thailand today. We pray, God, that you will encourage Mac and Narola and Happy and the others who are involved in this ministry. Let them know Lord, that we are here for them that we are praying for, that we care about them, and that we love them today. Thank, we thank you, Lord, for what we learned about our brothers and sisters serving in China in the church. We thank you, God, for their faithfulness. We thank you, God, for the challenge that they shared with us. We pray, God, that today you would encourage them and let that ministry continue to grow. Father God, we thank you for the ministry that we're going to hear about today in Guatemala. We pray, God, that you'll use the message today to challenge us, to see how we can be a part of the 2020 vision of reaching this world for Christ. Father, we want to continue to pray for those who are suffering in this pandemic. Lord God, we do pray for a vaccine. We know that you have all knowledge. The science is, is from you. And Lord God, I pray that those who are researching and looking, that ultimately they will turn and have their hope in you as well as they're developing this vaccine. We anticipate, Lord, how you're going to guide us and help us through this very, very difficult time. And Father God, we, want to, we also want to pray, God, as we think about the rest of this missions conference, that we will continue to grow together as a church, as we look to how we can reach our community and be a part of this ministry. And finally, Lord, I want to pray for this election coming up. Lord God, men and women today think that they have the answers. They think that they have all the power, the authority, but ultimately, Lord, you are the one that places people in leadership. And you are the one who takes people from leadership. And ultimately, Lord God, we pray that we will do our part and leave the results to you. I thank you, God, that we can have this confidence because we serve an eternal God who is from everlasting to everlasting. I pray this in your name. Amen. This time we are blessed to have scripture reading from our brothers and sisters in Guatemala. Segunda carta de Corintios, capítulo 4, versículos 13 al 18. Pero teniendo el mismo espíritu de fe, conforme a lo que está escrito, creí, por lo cual hablé. Nosotros también creemos, por lo cual también hablamos sabiendo que el que resucitó al Señor Jesús, a nosotros también nos resucitará con Jesús y nos presentará juntamente con vosotros. Versículos 15 y 16. Porque todas estas cosas padecemos por amor a vosotros, para que abundando la gracia por medio de muchos, la acción de gracia sobreabunde para gloria de Dios, por tanto, no desmayamos. Antes, aunque este nuestro hombre exterior se va desgastando, 
El interior, no obstante, se renueva de día en día. Versículos 17 y 18. Porque esta leve tribulación momentánea produce en nosotros un cada vez más excelente y eterno peso de gloria. No mirando nosotros las cosas que se ven, sino las que no se ven. Pues las cosas que se ven son temporales, pero las que no se ven son eternas. La cusicle vio lo que dice tu uge capa corintios tu cajo al capítulo hasta os lava el versículo va a echar el chile hasta echar la cali suchi lo pan la yole tan es ni tal lo tan chale eche ni tal lo tan chala lo tsi pantes u yole va a echar ni tal ile cujle el chico culti u dice esti va a catval ve u yole as otsi mas can va a ocupar el tiche cat il santama ocupar el suce as Echat la iban a que se tan la tulsavet a cama un parte, as la te obet o a que se tu tuve a tan tantísimo. Tu capa Corintios, tu capa al capítulo, as tu ola al versículo, ni tal se y chile. Este en el calcete, camcus en la cascue no cupa le ve, as ti y lochpe no cupanca. As ni mal chites la oxa ni riu tiche. Tiup ani le uakat tip anak sete as lay tok sabe tip iak tu kung kahit sin katike shol shol tung katename uani pas salkat biolak bah laval versiku esti uaye la pal kukul ti kupasat tu pan la yole tiu Kristo tan oti malskan uakush ni pal be ti jekil tu kuchiole as al ni jekin Capítulo <tose> Tan ay la eco no tu nim la pare y coxa que te dice. Así el cama a toc ti un cajue, un banal va tu trabajo. Tan palchi mal cuche un cajue escajil, que te escojo un nim la panile, un va llenal. As ay a toc cama sti, tan yeli mostra ti. Isla, noche no. Good morning, brothers and sisters. This has been an amazing missions conference. We have had the opportunity to join briefly in the lives of some of our missions partners throughout the world. We have learned about what God is doing. He is working. The message of salvation is changing the world. This reminds me of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 to 15. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know the one who has raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. The grace of God today is reaching more and more people. This is what we have been hearing from our missions partners throughout the world, and we are thankful. This pandemic has not slowed the march of the gospel. If anything, we have learned from our missionaries, missionaries that this pandemic has quickened the pace of sharing the gospel. In the words of Cindy Perry, from India, God has given us new ministry that we never could have expected. Now is the time for us to seize new opportunities, both globally and locally. The closed doors that we face only show us new doors to open. This is our 2020 vision for the world as we look forward to 2021 and beyond. We will look for the new opportunities to share the gospel of Christ. We will not be silenced because of a pandemic, 
We will not be silenced because of racial inequities. We will not be silenced because of evangelical compromise. We will not be silenced in the face of corruption. We will speak in unison with our mission partners, just as Paul wrote, since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. We will continue to speak the gospel along with our missions partners. We will speak into our local communities. We will speak the truth of Jesus because that is what we are called to do. We are not called to human advancement. We are not called to increase our investments. We are not called to increase our properties. We are, we are called just the same as our mission partners to speak the gospel with confidence because of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul knew that our sacrifice pales in comparison with the sacrifice of Christ for us. As we've focused a 2020 vision for the world, what does that look like? For OCM today, the world is a different place than when Pastor and Mrs. She founded our church as a missionary church, uh, as a missionary church to reach the Chinese immigrants in the U.S. The world is a different place than when God called Pastor and Mrs. Tinkson to come and, and lead us to expand our mission, mission's vision. The world is different today, and the challenges seem daunting, but we can echo the Apostle Paul when, we, when he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. How could Paul say that we did not lose heart? He, he faced tremendous persecution and rejection. He said in verses 8 and 9, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Paul did not lose heart. He did not give up. He did not turn to the government for answers. He did not stop sharing the gospel, even though he faced persecution and rejection. Paul did not lose heart because he was a jar of clay. Paul realized that he was a jar of clay. Paul, who shared in verses 7 through 12, that even in his darkest moments, he was confident of his purpose. He was a simple jar of clay that became a treasure as it was filled with Christ. Paul understood that a simple jar of clay of our lives will be nicked, scratched, cracked, and eventually turned to dust. He understood that anything he tried to amass in this world would disappear. Paul was not focused on protecting the jar of clay because he knew that it would pass and that the true value of what was, in, what was, true value of what was inside the jar was Jesus Christ. Our missionaries do not try to protect their jars of clay. They seek to grow in Christ. If we focus on protecting and prolonging the jars of clay of our lives, then we will lose heart because there will be death and there will be destruction. Our treasure is in Jesus Christ who fills our jars and never changes. Paul did not lose heart because Paul realized he was a jar of clay. Paul realized that suffering has a purpose. Sometimes I wonder if, if I had received all of the visions from God that Paul had received, if, if I would have had as much faith as he did. But when I see that he also had a lot more persecution and rejection than I do, the more Paul received from God, the more he let go of this world. He said in verse 17, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Paul did not lose heart because Paul realized that he was a jar of clay. Paul realized that suffering has a purpose. And Paul realized an eternal perspective. 
he says in our theme verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what we have seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This is what we have seen in the lives of our missionaries. Every project, every plan, every outreach, every activity has the objective of the eternal perspective. In Guatemala this year, Hope Bible Mission and Agape partnered with OCM to help feed over 300 families during this time of pandemic. HBM and Agape were able to provide medical relief flights for those in the rural areas suffering from COVID. Our pilots were used to provide relief flights due to the shutdown of travel all over the country. These are vital and important as we share the love of Christ with the community. But what we also see in Guatemala, as well as our, as well as our missionary partners in England, Thailand, India and China is that sharing the eternal salvation in Christ must be our primary focus. Please listen to our missionaries, Eddie and Neri, as they share about the ministry in Guatemala. Hola, hermanos. Muy buenos días. Estamos eh, con nuestro amigo y colaborador Neri Ajiatas. Eri Alas es mi nombre. Desde Guatemala les saludamos. Y deseamos que Dios Todopoderoso siempre esté derramando bendiciones sobre ustedes. En este mes de misiones se nos ha recomendado a nosotros una gran comisión. Y esa comisión la debemos hacer, aunque el mundo esté cambiando y aunque el mundo hoy en día esté parado, la palabra del Señor no puede parar. El Evangelio sigue, el Evangelio continúa y nosotros hemos de estar listos y preparados para adaptarnos en cada momento y en cada cambio que esté surgiendo en nuestra querida Guatemala. Estamos muy contentos de poder dirigirnos a ustedes en este mes de misiones y queremos decirles que como ministerio hemos tenido que comenzar a adaptarnos a las diferentes a, circunstancias que estamos pasando por esta pandemia que ha venido a azotar y a golpear muy fuertemente a nuestra humanidad. Eh, gracias por estar pendiente de nosotros. Queremos decirles que en nuestro corazón sigue habiendo la misma pasión, el mismo deseo por expandir el reino de Dios en esta tierra, en nuestra querida Guatemala. Gracias siempre por su apoyo y queremos seguir luchando, orando y cumpliendo la gran comisión que se nos ha encargado. Neri. Sí, gracias por sobre todas las cosas a nuestro buen Dios que nos da la oportunidad de participar en ministerios como estos y gracias a ustedes porque también celebran una de las secciones tan importantes o de los trabajos tan importantes que tiene la Iglesia de Cristo como son las misiones, como es llevar el Evangelio. Y claro, por supuesto, el 2020 ha sido un año muy difícil para todos como iglesia, como ministerios, como individuos. Y en Guatemala no somos la excepción. Eh, hemos tenido que adaptarnos, como bien lo decía Eric, a las diversas circunstancias que se nos han presentado Enfrente, claro, seguimos confiando en el Señor para que nosotros sigamos trabajando y sigamos llevando a cabo la gran comisión. En este caso, nosotros hemos trabajado, por ejemplo, con docentes en el área urbana, en el interior de Guatemala y también con maestros de escuela dominical. Este año, con la ayuda del Señor, llevamos a cabo una videoconferencia llamada Fundamentos de Educación Virtual la cual tenía como propósito capacitar a maestros del área de educación media y a, y a maestros de escuela dominical para que ellos se adaptaran y darles herramientas para que ellos sepan enfrentar y responder a las exigencias que no solo por la pandemia, sino también el mundo actual nos está exigiendo. Con la ayuda del Señor, esperamos que el otro año, que el siguiente año, sigamos trabajando. La idea es hacerlo de una manera combinada. Queremos hacerlo presencialmente, Queremos seguir llegando hasta donde ellos están, pero también queremos hacerlo de una manera virtual e introducirlos a ellos a esta área también para que ellos sigan teniendo eh, herramientas, para que ellos sigan trabajando en esta área, tanto programas bíblicos como los programas que ayudan a docentes del área media y a los estudiantes se ven en la necesidad de adaptarse a estas circunstancias y esto es lo que queremos hacer. Así que con la ayuda de todos ustedes, con sus oraciones... 
eh, eh, con su apoyo vamos a lograrlo. Damos gracias a Dios por este increíble privilegio que tenemos y pues celebramos el mes de las misiones. En Guatemala seguimos trabajando para la gloria y honra de nuestro buen Señor. Muy bien, así que queremos animarlos y sobre todo quiero decirles que el Evangelio no puede parar. La obra del Señor continúa y nosotros debemos o tenemos que adaptarnos a todo cambio que venga. Gracias por tenernos en su corazón, gracias por tenernos en sus oraciones y gracias por todo lo que ustedes han hecho para que el reino de Dios sea expandido aquí en nuestra tierra, Guatemala. Dios les bendiga. Dios les bendiga. The foundation of the HBM and Agape Ministries in Guatemala are always teaching the word of God and sharing salvation in Christ. We must relieve human suffering. But to only address what can be seen is temporary. We must always address what is unseen, which is eternal. Paul did not lose heart because Paul realized that he was a jar of clay. Paul realized that suffering has a purpose. Paul realized an eternal perspective. If we can have the same attitude as the Apostle Paul, then we can have the 2020 vision for teaching the world for Christ that has been modeled for us by our missionary partners. The answer has been modeled for us by our missionaries. First, we must focus on the priorities, on the opportunities. We must focus on the opportunities. When God's people realize that as jars of clay, we are not limited uh, if our jars are filled with God's knowledge and wisdom. In Guatemala, at one of our schools in Salquia Grande, the teachers did not have the option of virtual teaching because the kids, many of the kids did not even have phones, let alone the internet. What did they do? They have been going door to door. They have been calling those who do have phones and teaching those personally door to door who don't have phones. They have made sure that no child is left behind. In Guatemala, the small churches do not have the virtual option. The pastors go door to door teaching their congregations through the windows. They have been working alongside our missionaries to feed those in need. The closed doors are waiting to be opened when we stop, stop protecting our jars of clay. Second, we must focus on the foundation. Focus on the foundation. Every program and every project must have at its core sharing the gospel of Christ. For the last few weeks, dedicated brothers and sisters with our local missions outreach here at OCM have been passing out packages of love. Do they encourage? Yes. Do they show people that we care? Yes. And most importantly, they share the eternal message of Christ. We have been blessed with missionary partners who understand this very, very important principle. The gospel of Christ must be woven into every aspect of our ministry. Third, we must focus on the future. We cannot get stuck in the rut of today. Today leads to tomorrow. And a key part of tomorrow is that all our missionary partners emphasize, that, that all of our missionary partners emphasize to us is that, is that we need to be preparing the leaders of tomorrow The youngest generation must be equipped. This past January, our Guatemala short-term missions team met with a pastor named Tomas. Tomas can understand the sufferings of Paul. He was saved out of a background of Mayan religion and devoted his life to Christ. During the Civil War, uh, he, uh, he and his fellow Christians suffered, were severely persecuted. One of his friends was beheaded. Many were killed, and, and yet he kept serving, and God used him to lead many, many people to Christ. Today, Tomas is older, and he is still following God. He is not suffering like he did when he was young. But in his life today, he is focused on one thing, and that is what is unseen and eternal, 
salvation in Christ. I asked him recently about his vision for the future of the Quiche region of Guatemala. And, and for, those in, for those in the English service, here's a, a short part of that clip. La pregunta es, ¿cuál es su visión para los niños de Quiche en esta nueva capital? Bueno, mi, mi, mi visión para los niños en, el, en este año y para siempre es para que todos los niños, los jóvenes, que estén involucrados en las cosas espirituales. Bueno, hay muchos eh, asuntos así materiales y todo desarrollo, pero yo creo que este le pertenece a las autoridades, pero nosotros como cristianos, nuestro deseo es que los jóvenes, que, que sean los, eh, los futuros eh, líderes para las sí. iglesias. Sí. Ajá. Sí. Porque nosotros los, los ya viejos ya podemos retroceder, sí, pero sí. Los, los niños, que sean ellos los, los próximos miembros, los futuros líderes, los futuros eh, predicadores, sí. esa es nuestra visión. Sí, sí. En todas las regiones de Nevá, sí. de Chacuy, de Cozal, por qué no decirlo de, de Quiché, pues, sí. esa es nuestra visión. Tomás told our group the same thing that we have been hearing from Thailand, China, India, and England. Prepare the future leaders. He knew that his time was soon over. He knew that he had fought the good fight. But someone has to carry the torch. Brothers and sisters, this is our OCM 2020 vision for the world as we look forward to 2021. What is the message that we are teaching our future leaders? What is the message that they will carry forward to focus on the opportunities, focus on the foundation, and focus on the future? We are partnering with missionaries who have this same vision. What is our part in this partnership? We at OCM have three key roles. First, let go of your jars of clay. If we grasp what is temporary, then we will never know the eternal. We have been privileged to financially support missionaries who are the Pauls of today. We support missionaries like Henry Liu, Cindy Perry, Macinarola Sangler, Eri Alas, and others who can focus, as Paul did, on ministry because others are, are being used by God to relieve their financial concerns. When you fill out that missions pledge card, you are not pledging to support OCM. You are pledging to support Henry, Cindy, Bach, Banu, Mac, Narola, Kanoan, Eddie, Neri, and so many others. We don't want our dear brothers and sisters to be in need. That is the purpose of the missions pledge that we have asked you to fill out, either with a card here at church or online. Second is prayer and personal participation. We will be sharing more consistently prayer requests for our missionaries. Will you pray for India, England, Thailand, China, Guatemala, and Panama? Will you go? Right now, we cannot go on short-term missions. But when this pandemic passes, will you go, just go back to your normal vacations or will you consider serving alongside our missionaries in short-term missions? I want to share with you today the testimony of our brother Simon from OCM. He, he served in short-term missions and it had a huge impact on his life. For those of you who are in the Chinese service, stay right after service and watch the testimony of Simon. When I saw the tears roll down Jabalo's face, I saw and I knew that God wasn't Chinese or just at 154 Hester Street. Like most Chinese immigrant experience, my family worked hard and dug their heads down and thinking that that would save them someday. 
And like Moses, who moved from his land and eventually saved his people out of Egypt by the grace of God, um, my family sought to have a better life in America. And I'm sure they had uh, expectations for me, but I think, as God would have it, I went against everything that my culture dictated. I'm Simon, and for as long as I could remember, I never wanted a desk job. I wanted to work with my hands. I love working with my hands, and I love experiencing life and growth uh, firsthand. Um, I went to a junior uh, elementary school that was focused on the arts, and I uh, transferred for, into a performing arts high school from a liberal arts one. Uh, I went to a college for fine arts for a season and just to round things out, I was the captain of my high school track team. And now I'm pursuing acting and I've worked at uh, lots of coffee shops uh, for a long time as a day job. I guess you could say that I refuse to be traditional. Um, but I think the best gift that my family gave to me, were the spirits of uh, of curiosity and adventure that pushed me past my limits and to test all things and I have to say that it's one of my saving graces because uh, of that I was able to discover Jesus for myself even though I grew up at OCM my family who brought me no longer attend and serve here but I love what my grandpa says to me he says Simon no matter where you go as long as you love uh, Jesus, as long as you serve God, it's all that matters. I like to think that I lived a lot of life and gone through a lot of experiences. And here is where God steps in. Um, I hesitated to apply for the Guatemalan mission trip. I felt as, as if I was unworthy of receiving donations or support from the church. My reputation or standing, I felt it, it didn't help it along. But I wanted to serve. I wanted to see God beyond the same walls, same conversations and same connections week to week. Our team scrambled to find ideas for fundraising when it occurred to me that we should brew the coffee and serve the um, coffee that Pastor Rick gets from La Perla, the coffee farm that supports the ministry down in Guatemala. That way, we could practically taste and see a small part of God's vision for the world. We ended up raising more than enough for our entire team and extra. God worked beyond my expectation and beyond culture. I was excited to see him work. The first trip was about creating connections and establishing foundations for the medical center in Shell, a town about 10 hours long drive from Guatemala City, the capital. As the rocks gave way to dense, lush forest, I couldn't help but think that it was the need and hope for Jesus for the loss that drove Pastor Rick and the Hope and Agape team there. We met Chabelo and his family, who loved us and cared for us warmly. We never got sick, hungry, or in need. Though the roads were never without a ditch or boulder, we got to where we needed to be safely. The second trip, though, we all got sick, one after the other. As someone felt better, another went down. But God, in his timing, he had us be in different places and projects at the right time for rest and preparation in the right time. We gave our testimonies at different places at right times. And I led a worship service for a local church sang in Spanish. The center of focus was God. In this town of Shell, deep inside Guatemala, and there were people hungry for Christ. And I remember this moment on the second trip after we performed puppet shows and had children's ministry at different towns that we traveled to. Our team would split up and group kids with us to pass out crafts and to share crayons to decorate. Every single day, there were streams of kids, and sometimes 20 to a person, there were 10 of us, who would come to sit by our feet to craft and we would try our best to pass the crayons around with our limited Spanish. And at times it was frustrating and overwhelming because they were needy and feisty and their little hands and voices uh, constantly raising, constantly asking for the next thing. But I'll never forget this realization. I realized something about God. That while I was swallowed by the demands of the children uh, and I'm trying to meet the demands, aren't we the same to God? 
We're, we're needy. We're selfish. We're screaming and pulling at God for the next thing. And God, in His infinite love and mercy, in His perfect time, He gives to us what we truly need. That's something we all share as humanity, shown through the pure action of these kids. The world opened up to me. Every single place is in need of Jesus' way, truth, and life. Sin is everywhere, but He truly is the light of the world. This world truly is His creation. And there is no sweeter purpose than for Him to use all that I am, good and bad, for His glory and my good. Another moment I remember was before we even went on the second trip. I found news that Jabelo's wife, Anna, had passed away. Those from last year who went this time and I were devastated. During dinner of the last day, Jabelo expressed his sadness and his gratefulness for our team. He told us we brought a lot of joy and love into their home. And it was Jesus that brought us all together. Tears rolled down his otherwise serious face, and we all prayed for him and his family at the end. Jesus has brought us all together in the small and fleeting moments of life. I'm glad to have gotten known Anna before she passed. Though at times she seemed stern. Her love showed through the plentiful meals and hot drinks that, that poured out of that little kitchen. Their room was warm, full of movement and bouts of laughter and she was always at the center. Family in Christ, everywhere we go at. In my just to wrap up in, and in my 30 years of living in America, I've come to see that it's that our will is not God's will. He has a curious way of getting me to my knees to realize just how weak, prideful, and narrow-minded I am. I am beyond grateful that I had experienced God how he meant for us to, through our love for Christ who loves this world, in his creation and in his image bearers. He is not a God who works for us or goes by our own understanding, or conforms to our culture. He knows no bounds. And by this, he drew me to serve. Amen. This is why we go. This is why we prepare the future generations. Pastor Xi understood something very profound and very basic, which has not changed. When the future leaders are challenged to devote their lives to sharing Christ with this world, the church will thrive because this is what fills our jars of clay. Third, we serve together to share the gospel in our communities as we prepare our future generations. Local missions is a foundation of our church. We share the gospel with our communities. You know, we've had brothers and sisters who, have been, who are here sharing on Sundays, passing out gift packages to share the message of hope with our community. Our local missions team is preparing new ways for us to share Christ. How are you going to get involved? As we finish this final week of our missions month, I want to thank a few people who have been very important in preparing our missions month. Cheryl Louie and Tak Wong have, have labored long hours in video preparation. They have done amazing work to weave together the videos and provide the subtitles. Pastor Wing and Sherry Jang and some others have spent hours translating and, and proofreading. Pastor Tinkson has provided leadership, vision, and constant encouragement. Let's continue beyond Missions Month, to ask God to sharpen our focus on the eternal and let Christ fill our jars of clay to overflowing for the growth of his kingdom. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Father God, I pray for my brothers and sisters of Overseas Chinese Mission, that we can fix our eyes on what is unseen, the eternal. Let us be a part 
of this 2020 vision to reach this world for Christ. Brothers and sisters, for a few moments, stay here and, and watch a great report that has been prepared by our brothers and sisters who served in short-term missions in Guatemala. Guatemala 2020 Recap This is the team and the Soto family who faithfully housed, fed, and cared for us throughout our time in Shell. Upon arriving in Guatemala City, our team stayed at Semilla, a seminary focused on training church leaders, as many leaders in Latin America have had little formal theological education. We slept and ate here the days before going to Chell. The most of our time those first two days were spent at the Agape headquarters, preparing for our upcoming children's programs. We put together approximately 1,000 crafts for the children's program. We fine-tuned our puppetry and perfected our stage. And we learned and rehearsed several songs for the children, including a well-known classic, Father Abraham. On our third day in Guatemala, after having finished all of our preparations, we grabbed our neck pillows and snacks, hopped in the 12-person van, and hit the road for our eight-hour drive to the small town of Chell. We held our children's program four different times in three different churches within the town of Chell and one more time later on in the town of Saquil, each with 200 to 300 children. After the children were led into the church in groups of 20 to 30, with one of us as their teacher, our program would always begin with our puppets singing to the song, Yo Tengo Gozo, I Have Joy. Afterwards, Pastor Rick would then become Leo the Lion and teach the children the story of creation. It was our job to pop up behind the stage with the right puppets as Leo the Lion told the story. We would also teach the children John 3.16 and would wrap up the puppet show with the song Yo tengo un amigo que me ama. I have a friend who loves me. After we concluded our puppet show, we taught the children the hand motions to the songs we prepared and sang and danced with them. We also spent a lot of time doing crafts with the children. This was tricky for us as we tried to pass out one crayon at a time to each child. They would have to come back to swap with us if they wanted a different color. This always got a bit hectic, but after the first time, our team learned different tricks to make it more efficient and less chaotic. Our craft consisted of paper plates with a printout in the middle for the children to color and streamers for decoration. While in Chell, we also helped out on a construction site that the Guatemala team previously worked on the year before. This is where Agape will build a medical facility in the town of Chell. It would be used as a clinic to provide medical care for the locals as well as an educational facility. Currently, there is no medical facility whatsoever in Chell. In order to seek any medical attention, the locals would need to find a way to Naba several hours away by car. That morning, five of us moved and organized almost 300 bricks. Additionally, our team had the honor of sharing our varied and God-spoken stories throughout our time in Chell. Every single member of our team shared their testimony on this trip, some more than once, and some beyond Chell. While some of us worked at the construction site in Chell, the rest of the team drove 45 minutes to the town of Elom to share their testimonies. The day after that, some members drove for an hour and a half to share their stories with the pastors and locals of the small town of Pombalse. The roads to Elom and Pombalse were treacherous, but God blessed us with travel mercies and even more with the hearts of the people who came to listen to our stories. After we left Chell, we went to the town of Salkil, where we held our children's program one last time. It was in one of the schools that Run Hope partners with. One of the teachers, Carlos, here in the red, explained that many of the teachers of the school are Christian, and at times when there is insufficient funding for the school, these teachers will continue to teach regardless to ensure the students are able to continue their education. Students here actually learn three different languages, English, Spanish, and Exil, the language of the Maya people indigenous to Guatemala. At the end of our trip, we were back in Naba, where we participated in a teacher's conference held by Run Hope and Agape. The conference invited teachers from several of the small towns in Guatemala, including Ilom and Saquil, to explore the topic of integrity in their workplaces. 
We taught the teachers the songs we sang with the children, and a couple of us also had the opportunity to share with them what it looked like for us to follow the Lord in our own respective workplaces. After this, our last task of the trip was to participate in a friendly soccer tournament. Our team played as one of the four teams in the tournament, and as you could probably guess, we lost terribly. We were encouraged early on in this trip that sometimes it is not about how much we can get done. Instead, it is about who we are while we are there. He was referring to the many different missions teams who came to Guatemala and were so caught up with how many things they could build or do for the people that they forgot about the people. He wanted us to remember to focus on the people and who we are while we are with them. He wanted us to focus on loving the people through our interactions, not on what we could do for them. We were not there to do or build. We were simply there to love.
morning, OCM. Please join your heart with mine as we receive God's blessing together. Let's pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Help us to have a 2020 vision for this world, to know that you are building up your kingdom and that we are able to partner with you to spread the gospel message, to know that we are making disciples of all nations, whether it is locally or globally, that we are raising up a new generation of followers of yours. Help us, our God, to be able to trust in you always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This Missions Month has been a blessing for all of us. I am so thankful for the opportunity that we've had to come together and to learn and to grow by as we hear about the ministries that God has given us partnership throughout the world. We are blessed because we have missions partners that understand a vision, a 2020 vision to reach this world for Christ. And I just pray that we will continue to learn and grow from that experience. Now, over the last couple of weeks, we've had prayer meeting with various missionaries. Last week was Mac and Narola, and the week before it was Cindy Perry. This Wednesday will be our, our brothers and sisters from Guatemala. So I encourage you to, to join with us so we can pray for them and to pray with them, and that they will be praying for us. Also, this Missions Month, we've been talking about that Missions Pledge. It's not for OCM, as I mentioned in the sermon. This is for our missionaries. We just ask that you fill out the pledge so we can plan more effectively as we grow the missions ministry to reach more people for Christ as we support our brothers and sisters who are serving so faithfully today. This week we have our Bible classes. The Gospel Project today is it Take to Hear His Every Word. And Christ in the Old Testament this Tuesday is a king and his sons. Also this afternoon, as I mentioned last week, I have a seminar this afternoon about 3 o'clock. Uh, it, it's called A Voting Guide uh, by, from Pastor, Pastor Rick. And I'll just be sharing with you some thoughts and guidance about the upcoming election. Next Sunday... We're starting our live service. I'll be speaking live here. Now, again, the worship will be taped, but I'll be speaking live here in the auditorium. We can have maybe 20 people or so, depending upon if there's families or not. So we encourage you uh, to prepare ahead. In fact, this Sunday, uh, next Sunday is also communion. So prepare your juice and your bread ahead of time and create a, a place, a sacred space. So when we're coming together for worship, you're truly worshiping and truly taking communion together. Also, next Sunday, we have daylight savings time. It may not affect you as much at home, but plan ahead so you're not taken by surprise. Each week, we have the bulletin. As I share with you, I, we email it to you. It's also available in the, in the website. So you can look these things up if you want to get more information. We have a congratulations. Eliana Astrid Tingson was born on October 18th. At 12.31 p.m., she weighed 6 pounds, 15 ounces, and is 19 and a half inches. I think she's a little smaller than her brother. I want to pr praise God for this new birth and pray for Boaz and Megan as they are raising their children to follow him. Uh, another announcement uh, for Pastor Meng Yip. Some of you don't know him. He was on the Chinese side. Due to personal reasons, Pastor Meng Yip resigned as an OCM Chinese ministries pastor. We thank God for his three years of ministry, and we pray for his blessings, for God's blessings for him and his family in the future. Today after service, we have our, our coffee time, our time to talk after service. Next week, it's going to be different. 
because we're going to include a live element. We're going to include the people that are here in that coffee time. We'll see how that works. So looking forward to that for next week. Brothers and sisters in our Beyond Walls Church, let's leave this service today with a 2020 vision to reach this world for Christ.